Cross America, the Food and Nutrition Service under the USDA, administers several nutrition programs that provide healthy, balanced meals to children in schools. Because these programs receive federal assistance, all sponsors must comply with federal civil rights statutes, regulations, policies, and directives. In this training, we will discuss three compliance areas of civil rights and school nutrition programs, limited English proficiency, training requirements, and civil rights compliance reviews. Limited English proficiency. Limited English proficiency, or LEP, individuals are persons who do not speak English as their primary language and who have a limited ability to read, speak, write, or understand English because of their national origin. Recipients of federal financial assistance have a responsibility to take reasonable steps to ensure meaningful access to their programs for persons with limited English proficiency. Meaningful access means reasonable, timely, qualified, and effective language services that are free to individuals with LEP when accessing the school nutrition program and its activities. What reasonable steps must you take to ensure meaningful access for your LEP population? First, determine the extent of your obligation to provide language assistance services by conducting a self-assessment, typically called a four-factor analysis, of each service area. First, identify the LEP communities in your area. Federally funded programs should assess the number or proportion of LEP persons from each language group in its service area to determine appropriate language assistance services. Helpful data can be found from federal agencies such as the U.S. Census Bureau, the U.S. Department of Education, the Federal Interagency Working Group on Limited English Proficiency, state and local government agencies, and local community-based and religious organizations. Second, identify how LEP students and their families interact with your program and determine the frequency with which LEP persons come into contact with the program or activity. This may include LEP students and their families applying for program benefits, participating in your meal programs, meeting with school nutrition staff, and accessing your website and materials. Third, determine the nature and importance of the program, activity, or service to people's lives. And fourth, determine the resources available and the costs. Find language assistance services in oral and written forms. School nutrition programs must provide free, qualified, and competent language assistance and notify LEP persons that free language assistance is available. Qualified, competent language assistance must be provided in oral and written forms as is necessary. Qualified and competent interpreters must be utilized to communicate with LEP persons in situations involving discussion of vital information and presentation of information about FNS programs. Family and friends should not be used as interpreters unless requested by the LEP person and only after an offer of free interpretation services had been made and recorded. Children must not be used as interpreters unless in an emergency situation involving the safety of the LEP person. Vital documents such as the free and reduced price meal application, instructions for how to apply, and parent letter with frequently asked questions must be translated for program participants. The USDA provides several translations of the application on the USDA FNS website. Your school nutrition program website should have a link to these translated documents. In Georgia, all school nutrition programs should provide these vital documents in English and Spanish on their websites. Each program should determine what other languages are frequently encountered and provide those interpretations as well. Program websites and online automated application systems must also provide meaningful access to individuals with LEP. Online applications should be available in English and Spanish with hyperlinks to translated versions of the paper application. Hyperlinks should be written in the non-English language. 
Entities must evaluate their website and any subrecipients' websites or web pages to determine if all vital content or attached documents regarding school nutrition program services are translated into Spanish, including hyperlinks to any Spanish content. For frequently encountered languages, post language-specific hyperlinks that contain comprehensive lists of translated material available to the public in Spanish and other languages, if available. Notify the public in frequently encountered languages that free language assistance is available. School nutrition programs must ensure that LEP individuals are notified about the availability of free language assistance and how to request it. Agencies may develop short statements or taglines written in English and frequently encountered non-English languages that notify individuals with LEP about the availability of qualified, competent language assistance, free of charge, and provide directives regarding the vital nature of letters, notice, and announcements provided to them by state and local agencies. These notices should be provided on a program's website, in student registration materials, and communication regarding special diets. Capture and track the language spoken by LEP persons and the language assistance provided at the point of service to each LEP person. Implement a method for monitoring the LEP person's access to services and the language assistance measures taken at the point of service. Train staff on policies and procedures. School nutrition staff have the potential for interacting with LEP participants and their parents or guardians. Your staff members, particularly frontline staff, should be trained on how to identify language needs of an LEP individual and how to ensure that appropriate language assistance is provided so that LEP individuals have meaningful access to school nutrition programs. Training Civil rights training is required annually for all staff working in school nutrition programs. Training must be provided and documented for all frontline staff as well as persons responsible for reviewing civil rights compliance. Training is required so that people involved in all levels of administration of school nutrition programs understand the civil rights related laws, regulations, procedures, and instructions. Teaching tools, including the Georgia Department of Education Civil Rights Training videos and other resources, can be found on the School Nutrition Program website. State agencies are responsible for training local agencies' subrecipients. Local agencies are responsible for training their subrecipients, including frontline staff and their supervisors. New employees should receive civil rights training before participating in program activities. Compliance Reviews State agencies and SFAs must be reviewed to determine civil rights compliance. SFAs are reviewed during the administrative review. Major findings should be forwarded to the reviewed entity and the FNS Regional Civil Rights Director. The Compliance Review will cover the following areas. Civil Rights Training, Civil Rights Assurances, Public Notification, Racial and Ethnic Data Collection, Complaints of Discrimination, Previous Compliance Reviews, Resolution of Non-Compliance, Disability Compliance, and Limited English Proficiency. Special compliance reviews may also be conducted by FNS Civil Rights Division. These reviews may be scheduled or unscheduled and are completed to follow up on previous findings of noncompliance or when needed to investigate a specific incident, reports of noncompliance, a pattern of discrimination complaints, or a history of statistical underrepresentation of a particular group. Resolution of Noncompliance Noncompliance is a factual finding that a civil rights requirement is not being adhered to by an organization receiving FNS funding. Findings are provided to the state agency or SFA in a written report. Steps must be taken immediately to obtain voluntary compliance. A findings effective date is the date of notice to the agency. Resolution of noncompliance must be accomplished in accordance with FNS Instruction 113-1. 
In summary, this training has reviewed limited English proficiency, training requirements, and civil rights compliance in school nutrition programs. Here is a list of must-dos from this training. Offer free language assistance and auxiliary aids and services to ensure meaningful and effective access for individuals with LEP and for individuals with disabilities. Train staff annually on civil rights and document in training records. Resolve instances of noncompliance in accordance with FNS Instruction 113-1. Thank you for participating in Georgia Department of Education's Civil Rights Training Series. For USDA civil rights resources, such as posters, complaint forms, and prototype civil rights procedure templates, go to the Georgia Department of Education School Nutrition Program's website. You may also contact your assigned area consultant if you have any questions. If you need additional information about civil rights and school nutrition programs, or links to civil rights documents, please contact the Georgia Department of Education School Nutrition Division.